Chairman, I call this regular meeting of the Board of Columbia. Actually, yes, a regular, although another date, regular meeting of the Columbia Board of Selectmen for, on Tuesday, September in the year 2021. Uh, first of all, both for conducting a hybrid virtual meeting. This meeting will be held both in person and virtual. The session is being both video and audio recorded. Board members and staff who are joining virtually will generally remain on mute when speaking or voting and will generally be keeping video of themselves on throughout the meeting. <clears throat> if a member of the public joins virtually and creates an audio or video disruption, they may be manually ejected from the meeting upon recommendation of the staff or the first selectman. For public input, it should have been 24 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, we, will, we will check. If you are attending virtually in public comments, either one, during the meeting, you can be submitted through the chat, wave your hand and request the mic to be unmuted. Please include your name and address if you are addressing the board of selection. Thank you. First order, second order business, budget allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag United States. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's not on here, but I just want to say what in saying the, uh, the pledge, the Boy Scouts did a nice job this weekend on 9 11. Um, so it's been mentioned a few times. Thank you very much. Approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Lisa. That's five. Uh, approval of the minutes, Board of Second Regular Meeting Minutes for August 17th, 2021. I move to approve the Board of Second Regular Meeting Minutes for August 17th, 2021. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Any audience of citizens? Any hands? Any hands? Hearing none. Old business. Archery, only hunting on Zegda Farm. So we had a meeting. Uh, we talked about the Zegda Farm archery and the ability someday for to expand that to other hunting. So uh, I move to approve the archery only hunting for years for the Zegda Farm. Proper discussion. We have only you have to vote on the other. No, because that's all it's allowed to do is ball. So we're not allowing any other type of hunting. Okay, so that's just what we're doing now. Great. All right. Anybody else? I do have a comment or a question. Um, and it, it says something about they have to know where um, campsites are and other things, but I don't see any of that listed on the map. So would the would there be more detail given to the hunters so they know where to avoid and that kind of thing? Yes, the Tom McGrath and I are going to make sure anyone who's going to have the property will be walked on the borders of the archery only. And then we're also making signs that state that you're entering an archery only section of the barn. And the Boy Scouts, anytime they've hunted has been the north section of camp or camped. Anytime they camp, then the north section of the trails are. 
Okay. Not, not on the fields where Ron's egg is. is and where and where the hunting will be allowed. Right. The hunting's more in the woods and around the field on the edges. Thank you. Good news because there's some feedback on what it is. Might be your cat. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I believe you. So uh, I mean, you'll, have, you'll have to look up and see if she. Okay. Her hand what was, aye or nay? Oop. Is that a yes? Aye. I saw it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Update COVID 19 employee policy. Well, uh, here we are again. COVID. But this now is new wrinkle, vaccinated, unvaccinated, and what we're going to do. So uh, Mark put together through research of other towns, talked to the town attorney. Mark, we want to the the main thing we want to have is a clear policy of what designates a requirement to remain out of work. There's three different A, B, and C um, things that could happen. Um, you, you test positively for COVID or you have direct exposure to a positive COVID individual, or you're required to stay home to care for a child or a dependent who has COVID. Um, the full-time employees will be granted up to 10 days of COVID paid leave uh, without using their sick time, and part-time employees will be prorated based upon what if they normally work three days a week, they would get six days equally, a two-week stay out for COVID. Uh, after that, the employees will be required to use their sick time, vacation, or uh, personal time. And then we also spell out um, different factors that might come into play with an unvaccinated employee as well. And we think we took the best from the towns that I researched and tried to make sure that we weren't too tough because we don't want people ignoring the fact that they're sick and exposed to someone and not being tested. Yeah, it's 10 days enough of when I was reading this. I mean, well, that's why they do have sick time. They have sick time. So people wouldn't lose their jobs, though, either. If, let's say they had to stay out longer, they'd still have a job. They just wouldn't necessarily get paid. Right. Um, it could be unpaid. Now, 10 days, 10 days is work days. Because it says on the next page what to do. Stay home for 14 days after your last contact with the person with COVID-19. So you have two weekends in there. Yeah. Whether you go out on a Wednesday, there's two weekends, we count 10 days work days. So they're really out for 14 right. days. Can people then people could still work from home? Yes. Because um, that, that may that may solve any problems. Some employees have the ability to work from home. But they could I could, yeah, then that would solve any problems, I think. Some employees do not. Like public works, you can't work from home, but better not to as Oh, Lisa has a question. I was just questioning whether that was enough. So. I apologize for the cricket in my room. Um, my question would be is so if a public work employee had an exposure, but they could work alone and do like maintenance somewhere, could they not go to work? Um, that would be negotiated through the health district because that, that does come into play. Um, some employees towards their end of their quarantine. Um, with wearing masks and being segregated from the other employees might be able to come back and do specialized work. So uh, that'll be a case by case basis between the health, East Island Health District and my office. But what about testing every, getting three negative tests in, in five days or six days or something? Well, that can shorten up your, your time out. So who decides if they get the test? Or health we district. We will we'll work with the contact manager at the health district and we answer all the questions and then they design the return. So we've abdicated our role to the health district and we we follow what they tell us we can do. We work as a team. Bernadette's already gone down this road with her employees, but she's calling the health district. They ask questions, we put them in contact with the employee, 
the managers stay in the loop and my office stays in the loop. And then we document everything. So it, it's not fun. It, it's when this hits a department, it can, um, it can really eat up your desk. Oh, yeah. I guess I would just say, just in some cases, they could be evaluate the amount of time we get. I mean, I don't know, but you said a policy, you said policy, but. Well, up until now, we had you started a sick day right away. So, so last year we, we covered everything, but now as people have had the ability to get the shot and there should be less COVID positives, we're transitioning to a 10 day, is my recommendation. That's reasonable. And it's two weeks. But how many 10 days exposure can you have? Because somebody can with because you're out for two weeks, even though you may not be sick. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. But you have to because that's the guideline. Which use the exposure and showing signs. And it has to be serious exposure. Okay, so you're not talking about they went out to dinner and they feel fine and they can't come to work for 10 days. Right. They have to be with someone who's COVID positive. Closer than six feet, more than 15 minutes, okay. and have an extended exposure. You know, you you hugged your sister and she got sick. She came positive. Now you have to go get tested. And you have to get tested between three and five days after exposure. But you don't necessarily have to take the 10 days because you right. only if you come up negative, then it might shorten it. To just that. And so, I think this is why we're working in partnership with the health district because honestly, you know, was it 14 minutes or 15? You hug her, did she cough? Did it, I, I don't need it, to be honest with you. Um, we'll, we'll work with the, the health department and uh, we, will, we can revisit it. I don't think we're going to have habitual, you know, exposure people. I, I don't, I trust that we haven't had a problem. Right, exactly. So, so you haven't uh, had problems. No. So we're setting a policy. We're voting on it, Mark. Yes, so no, uh, no thing here. So I move to approve the COVID-19 um, updated employee policy presented. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? You want to? Is she muted? For she muted. Hold on. You're muted. My bad. I I vote no. There are things about the policy that I I can't agree with. Okay. So four and one. Um. I'm saying that. Rebecca sent there, right? Is that next? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Becker Center, I move to approve the Becker Center procedure for reopening. So a little bit of homework to read on this. We're not homework. Let's do it. Tell me about it. And we have Bernadette if we have any questions for Mark. Yes, yeah, so Bernadette and I uh, were brainstorming on how the seniors are definitely wanting the senior center open. And we worked with our uh, director of the Eastern Health District and took some of the best policies we saw at some of the other senior centers and uh, came up with a strategy that the director was comfortable if we followed these five um, requirements that we would be making the senior center as safe as we could. And one of the main requirements is that you are, you show proof of vaccination. Um, so, Bernadette, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm going to pull you in on this because one of the phone calls numerous times that I received was a woman who was fearful that her mother, who needed to attend the senior center uh, for just getting out, but also for food and stuff, um, there was concern about COVID and what was going on. And, you know, are we going to be providing meals on wheels, anything like that for people who are sick or unvaccinated or afraid or? 
Absolutely. Meal on Wheels is available to anyone 60 years of age and older in Colombia. And um, whether they're homebound or they're fearful of going out in public due to COVID, uh, Meal on Wheels, they can have a frozen drop, which is every Tuesday um, of five meals. It includes milk, butter, fresh fruit, juice, fruit cups. So if they are feel uncomfortable to come into the senior, sunny, senior center for any reason, they're welcome to have Meal on Wheels delivered to them. So in saying that, thank you. I've read these things here. It all looks good to me. In saying that, I'm going to, um, so I move that we accept the uh, Becca Center uh, procedures for reopening. Discussion, I'm going to say, this is, it's open for those who want to use it, who want to be there. If they do not, if there is concern or they're not feeling well, by all means, we'll still uh, take their phone calls and help them out. Are you okay? And I, I don't doubt that. That's why I asked about the meals. They do not have to attend the senior center. Okay? Because I will get phone calls. Uh, and that's fine. We can, I'll, I'll take the calls, but you know, we're doing we're doing our best. The only question is how do we arrive at the 50 people? It seems like a lot of people but uh, Bernadette, based on how much the room will hold and and distancing uh, is a number she was comfortable with. We can lay it out so 50 people can be 60 or part of the way. Okay. Is, is 50 a good number? Every time I'm in there, there's probably 30. Well, there are some occasions we have duplicate bridge. We also have a quilting group, billiards, and lunch happening all at the same time, where right before we just uh, closed, we had over 75 people in the building which is uh, not a good idea. So um, now I've, I've moved everything around so that my lunch crew is able to come in and get out before the large group of duplicate bridge comes in. So uh, we will never be able to go over the 50 maximum capacity, including staff. Okay, and you can also move programs around or have to uh, uh, Delete one or something for a, a time. So, okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five. Well, all those thank you. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. All right, do business. Approval to install old firehouse fire on two poles. I hold the uh, the old Columbia Fire Department building, is that it? No, no. Where are we putting it? Across the street. Put it on two poles where the current firehouse is. Got some pictures here. They're not putting them in the black and white. I got them on the uh, color. Is that seriously like to look at that and just pass it around? We'll appreciate it. And then if you got a little map in your packet. Yes. So it's going to be. As you look at the firehouse in the street, you have the right hand side next to the scaff property, somewhere in the vicinity of the stone wall that ends between the scaff property and the town property, which is the firehouse property, on that hill. Um, if, if you people approve it, then we have to go through a building because the building department uh, zoning uh, deems it as a permanent structure because it's going to have two utility poles on the ground and then the frame that was. On the old firehouse is going to be modified to fit on a couple of cross members, and then the uh, siren, once it's put back together, uh, we had it we had it refurbished. Uh, we we'll run on top on top of that, so the height will be the total height by no more than fifteen feet high, and uh, it'll be no more than past members. We, no. I have a question because I'm looking at this and the parking for people to go visit this. The parking, if they can get into the parking side, they have to walk across the departure lane of fire engines, emergency vehicles, and stuff like that. Um, you have a couple of elderly people over there, and all of a sudden, there's a, I mean, just give me a plan for that. Yeah, so there probably isn't one for that. It wasn't meant to be, I don't think it was meant to be visited, it's just as a, as a, as a, when most people drive by, they do so. We didn't, we didn't feel that people, I didn't feel that people were going to come 
and visit them. I move that we approve the installation of the old firehouse siren and the two poles on Route 167 and Route 66 as a dedication memorial to the Columbia Volunteer Fire Department. Do you remember those? Yeah, remember that. Do that? Remember the holiday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember it. Okay. Cool. So, okay. Any more discussion? <clears throat> we will work on a safety plan for that. I guess I like, is there any, uh, any plans about putting uh, just in memory of people who have served during plans to put names or something on it? I mean, it's a general flag state or something to that effect. Not to put names on it, no, because we want to always add to it. So it would just be a, you know, for past members. Okay. The past members are recognized in the meeting hall uh, on the memorial flag, the name and then the year that passes on the flag and such a Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Lisa said aye. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Nanders. Columbia Fire Department, 7.2. So, uh, yeah. So, long range was the 10 year plan or two month plan? Or why don't you? It's a, it's a couple of things. Um, I have a chat. I had. Like a narrative, I didn't uh, add it to your packet, but if you like a copy of it, I mean, copy what you're just saying to kind of share. Sure. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, we've been working with the town with Mark uh, probably since the March timeframe. So we've been uh, going back and forth. And as such, uh, we were asked to get three quotes. So in here, you'll see the quick summary as to what's happened. Um, the Columbia Volunteer Fire Department is seeking to upgrade its uh, 20 year old audio and visual capabilities for the all volunteer memberships utilization. As we're finding with a number of things, and you'll see that uh, in terms of building maintenance as well, our building is on the 20 year mark. So we didn't have a lot of repairs because things were brand new. Um, also, with the advent of COVID, um, there's been a huge need for remote meetings. And in our case, a lot of remote classes are also being conducted now. And our current infrastructure is basically a projector and a laptop. So it really is not, we have people holding their cell phones. We have people at home calling in from their phone. It's, it's very ineffective in terms of audio. Uh, we're planning to upgrade the large meeting room with bi-directional audio and visual capabilities. That means we're gonna put a camera in as well so we can see the audience or have a remote projector. It's very similar to this, exactly. In addition, we want to take our small conference room and provide a kind of a compact offering like this so that from an emergency management standpoint, uh, Jerry was supposed to be here, but if we ever needed to have a, a large hurricane or some kind of event where we needed to have emergency management folks, they, police, they could operate independently in there. Um, third thing we'd like to replace our building wide paging system. As you can imagine, you have the old speakers that are in the ceiling, they have the knob on it, you have to turn it, you got to take a rubber thing and twist it. It's really not effective. Uh, justification is because NFPA regulations for firefighters, Connecticut Department of OEMS, uh, they're increasing our need for online education. So they're saying we have to get continuing education. A lot of these classes are online. Um, what we'd like to be able to do as well as um, offer classes, but also have instructors who could be remote give the class in our location, saving us money in terms of travel expenses. Um, we started with a company by the name of Rockwell Communications. Um, we like them, they're very good reputation. Uh, one of our members worked with them at UOC. I'm sorry, University of Arthur. Um, and when I spoke to Mark, he said, try to go to Novus Insight. Novus is the guys that provides the support here. And a Valley Communications is a third company that I've worked with over at Porter. As you can see, Rockwell is coming in at 27, 627. Valley Communications said, we're at 75,000 and we don't have all the details yet. And the firm that Novus recommended was a systems integration firm and they were at 64 too. Um, the only reason I put the subject to final approval is we started this process in the March timeframe and there's a chip shortage that's affecting just about everything. And they can give us a really hard price, but they're pretty comfortable with that 27. It was 24 at one point, but in, in going through the updated quote as recently as last week, uh, they think they can handle that, but we have not given a purchase order. 
we would take so long to get this. So basically, that's our first request, and the chief will get into some more long-term capital. So once again, three elements, uh, speakers throughout the building, AV in the large conference room, and bringing a complete solution very similar to this into the small conference room. So we have two parallel capabilities, and that's a new system. Thank you. Any questions? And I have copies of phones if Ben or Mark. I don't need them. We'll yep. do it. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, so then uh, our next few topics we have, I'm just going to jump down actually to the, the floodgates um, the driveway lines. Uh, is that on? Sorry, Chief, is that on this? Which one? We don't know what you're oh, sorry, the agenda. Sorry, no, I was looking at, I was going to save the capital for the last discussion. Okay. The, the, the floodgates is just a, a recommendation I'd like to, to bring, bring forth to the board about um, some of our instances we had at Parker Bridge Road. We recently had um, the young lady get trapped in her vehicle. Um, Unfortunately, also, we've heard the story about the state trooper and the that passed away in the flood water. Um, we have a significant issue at Parker Bridge Road and at Sanders Road where it seems to always flood. Um, my recommendation or thought to the board would be possibly installing some type of floodgates that we could control, kind of similar to Mansfield Hollow Dam has. Um, we have a lot of people that respond to these emergencies equipment um so money liabilities to close the road yes gate like a like a metal gate that would close the road to prevent people from continuing to drive either not knowing or thinking that they can get through um i did talk to the the chief in coventry obviously doing a plan with coventry um to put the gate on each side mm -hmm. um, i think the, the the cost could be very minimal for the the life Building and the, the safety that it could ensure. Um, maybe even just like a, a, a combo lock on it that both sides, both towns or departments have that once you open one side, obviously you can open the other. Um, but just a, a recommendation and a thought that maybe the, the board would really want to consider for, for going forward. Because we have had several instances of, of vehicles and gone to emergencies there for peaceful events. Have all these vehicles bypassed homes that were in the road? Yes. Really? And I, I, I personally was setting up cones with uh, Assistant Chief Lewis. I got the package store. <laughs> the state put the signs out, big road closed yeah. sign with cones. And go right around. People it. go right through it. Cones. No, but when did it, you, one of your, your cones were down or whoever the state put it up, road closed, it had fallen over, I got out of the car, put it back up. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I put it up. I go back to my car. Two cars go by it, and, and I'm the red hell. So remember the bridge we were in construction with country, and they went over the bridge and bent all our week. But the problem yeah. happens in that people can see the yellow lines. If the mm -hmm. water's not moving, it's very, very confusing to people. They say, "Oh, I can see the lines, but it's not deep," and that's the problem. Okay. Uh, and then the. the the other the driveway clearance ordinance. I know we have the town has an ordinance for uh, new properties and new developments about clearing um having a, a the driveway clearance so that emergency apparatus and stuff can get down down the new driveway. Uh, what we're seeing seeming to find is that some of the current uh, citizens and stuff we've gone, gone to their their house for emergencies and we, we can barely get the ambulance down, let alone maybe a fire truck or for uh, an emergency. We've uh, started with, with obviously some like social media, just kind of a, a more of a campaign to, to notify the, the citizens that you guys, that they need to keep their areas clear so that we can get to an emergency if they have one. Um, no, I didn't think we stay clear. You're talking about vehicles or snow trees? Or like the trees, the overhang, the, um, so, I didn't know if it was something that we wanted to go to town or the board wanted to look into maybe expanding that ordinance um, to current driveways. Again, it's, we start damaging vehicles, expenses, or again, just not being able to get to someone's residence. Just okay. um, another recommendation. 
going to be tough to enforce. I well, think you would at least get a letter saying we will, you're on notice that we cannot get down your driveway. You need to be Rob, when the FedEx man said to me, this is the last time I'm coming down here unless you trim your trees, I trimmed the trees. <laughs> that would get their attention. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Tell people yeah. Amazon's not going to come mean, anymore. That'll be done then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we could piggyback also with the sign numbering, I know we tried that for many, many years. The what? The sign, the sign, the sign numbering. There are a number of driveways that are next to each other, so they're technically adjacent, and there'll be two flag lot houses. So you have four houses, and it, it's it's part of a bigger picture, maybe a campaign about let us find you and then let us get to you. It's kind of like step one is as we're driving down 87, it's dark, it's raining, right. it's very tough to see, and then you know we're not asking them to fix problems that would be way too much, but even that becomes a problem. Right. But We'd like to have potholes on the driveways, everything, I mean, <laughs> anything from branches to potholes. Yeah, to no, I get it. I get it. Yep, so we could start with the view yeah. digital, letter, and we could only the target houses we know are from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then our, our last is the talking about our, our future budget and going forward. Uh, there's been discussion about the ARP and then grants for for funding our future capital project. Um, I just I just want to make you aware that we we go for grants. The department has independently written their own. Um, I say the town and the citizens close to a half million dollars in the past twenty years through through grants, and, and we do the best that we can. And a lot of those higher number of grants have been to the federal government that are designed to make departments whole, bring them up to a more level playing field throughout the, the US is, is kind of how they look at it. And to get those grants again with our financial situation here in town, they were very fortunate, which is a good thing, but kind of put this on the back burner for some of the, the bigger grants in the in the federal system. Um, I just don't want to see the, the town or the department having to rely on grants going forward. Um, so again, they are a benefit and they they help us out tremendously and hopefully when we, we keep getting them <laughs> if we can and they can then go that money can then go to another project in town that, that could use it. Um, but I I'm afraid of always having to possibly go to the to the town or going to a our general fund budget to, to pay for things um, if it's not budgeted or, or forecasted uh, appropriately with some of the, the needs that we know are coming up in this large project. Um, I think a, piece, a piece of that we're at is, is a 20 year life cycle. So if you look at a million dollars, you just take that and we would fill a spreadsheet out. You'd want to see all those 50s lined up for the 20 years. Um, and then you have staggered, obviously, you have staggered. We have the current uh, unit that we get. We take care of the ambulances with our funding through ambulance billing. But we want to make sure that when you look at 20 years, if we pick a number, say we pick a million, we have to keep an eye on that to see if the prices are going up. Because if the prices are going up within 10 or 15 years, we may have to make adjustments there. So, um, just like we're having a very good discussion on the building now, it's maybe we have to have some working sessions with respect to capital equipment when it comes to the large apparatus, because they're all expensive. The tanker is closing in on its uh, 20 year mark in the next few years. Um, and we have an older engine. And so it's it's an ongoing process. In addition to things like the apparatus, the, the things you put on your back, you know, the air bottles, all that stuff's expensive. And we want to make sure that we're giving the town the information they need so they can do the planning in an appropriate manner. Okay, so I have seen long range plans, and I know that we have or have talked about, we should have, if I remember it, uh, money every year set aside for fire department stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all, for, I'm all for putting aside X amount of dollars to be able to spend incrementally when those things come up. I have no problem with that. That's that's smart budgeting in my 
you know, and we will look at the cost of things. I, I don't remember. Well, there they are. I don't know when this was been. Well, that was our, that's what we've been working on. Okay. If, if things have changed, it would modify this. Okay, so yeah. have we in fact been putting money away for things, Ed? Yeah, uh, I believe so. Uh, actually, no, because we're working. There's no money put in this year's budget because we were working on the, I don't remember, is it the rescue truck? <laughs> yeah, the rescue truck. We're yeah. finishing the rescue truck. So we're finishing the rescue truck. So nothing went in this year. Because there but, no but that 150 we took out of the general fund to be able to finish the rescue truck yes. was in lieu of the 150 yes. going into that. Yes. And right. next year, there's some money in the plan to put money in the next. I have here for the next four years. Next year is a big bump of 325. We'll have to look at it, but um, there is money going the next four years of funding for the park. park. And but, we're here, here's here's I'm gonna make a statement. There's money going into a fund forever. Unfortunately, that's what we're that's what we're really planning and looking at because something's going to come up in age and stuff uh, every year or every five years. So and as we as we did with the rescue truck, that original target date was about 18 months prior to the actual date because, you know, the town said we'd like to, you know, can we defer that for a year or two? And we said, sure. Now, we just incur more maintenance costs. If the tires get a certain age, they have to be replaced. They are not like your little bicycle tires. Just to replace tires on a piece of apparatus is unbelievably expensive. And we're re they can have put almost brand new tread, but they still have to be replaced. It's that kind of budgeting. So yes, we can bump it out, but we want to make sure we communicate that, well, if we go out two years, we're going to have to put tires on it. Yep, and that's all. Yep. It's just communication. Yep, just communication. Absolutely. That's all, we're, that's all we're looking for is keep that dialogue open. So, uh, okay. Steve, have you worked with the grant writer to exhaust the possibility of a grant for the air bottles and the forestry truck? So I've been in contact, start, started the process with uh, a grant company. Um, okay. Haven't solidified or, or even signed a contract with them. Um, again, it's weighing the, the options. Uh, so you can get a couple of grants for $500,000 here and there. Is that worth paying a grant writer yes. or paying someone for for the, the larger ones, which un unfortunately, which we would still try and we, we, we've written for before, is the, the larger FEMA um, a a AFG grant. So. But remember, I gave you that they put a lot more money out there than normal. Mm -hmm. And towns all around us in the last round did get rewarded in the normal um, firefighter yep. grants, including Bolton, who got the air packs and yeah, the air like we we have that that was awarded a grant from 20 years ago. Um, we would still be probably using almost the same grant and, and submitting it again, obviously tweaking it to to its a, the appropriate effect for now. Um, and seeing if we can, can get that. We just know that something like that expires on on set date. And we just want to make sure that there's a contingency that it's, it's still planned for. We always are going to plan for what you need, Chief. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with Mark. And I told him the same thing today about grants that we talked about, Brown. So yesterday. I want a name to the person responsible of writing the grant. And I want to know when it's supposed to be submitted and documentation that it has been submitted. I understand. I've said to Mark that somehow if you need money for grant writer, would you know come to us with the proposal and the company, and we'll take a look at helping me out. Because if you have to write X amount for $240,000 for the air breathing apparatus. If we get that and we have to pay 10 grand for the grant writer, yep. if they get a percentage of it, I think that's good business. Mm -hmm. no, no. But work with us, we're back to the communication. I don't ever want you to go, you know what, we're not going for it because we're worried about it because we got it 20 years ago. Forget it, let's go for it. You, you, you know, so that's my opinion, but I'd like yep. to know who's in charge, who, you know, uh, who's doing it, if, or if you have a company to hire, 
talk to us about it and we'll see what we can do. And can you uh, contact if it was gold? I think it was was rewarded for the air tax. Mm -hmm. Can you contact that chief and get a copy of their grant? Yes, I know. Well, I can definitely see so what they did. Shoot it to us. We'll plagiarize. And, 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 and the other thing you can say is, hey, chief, we got a grant for this three years ago. If you're, if you're thinking of putting in a grant, we'll send you our grant. So yep. we, you know, change the name. That's all we ask. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, our, our, best, uh, our best combat manuals were the ones we stole from other ships mm -hmm. and just went through free fleet training. So. But remember, change the name. We forgot. All right. You don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers here. I understand it, and I, 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 you know, in the next month, less than a month, I'd like to put together a five-year plan that's really reasonable and our or realistic. Okay, so what we need to know is what we have on file. Is this still what we're going on? Would we need that date to be current? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Any other questions? Anything else for us? Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. And hopefully it was only a smoking point. After all the side of the story. There's something in the chat. I've got a cricket. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Capital Projects American Rescue Plan. What's that? The next one? Yes, on that one three. That's good. Yeah. So we met, I think we just talked about this last time. Where are we on the American Rescue Plan? We've talked about some things. We really have to talk about uh that just said we need to put something in and go with an initial project. Um, and looking at all this stuff that says ARP under the projected spending balance and stuff, there's a lot of Maybe he's there, but really, I, 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 and, and Beth's not still on the line, but we talked about the um, rec park, new pavilion up there. It's a ready to, there's plans already drawn and stuff. If we approve it, I think we're going to, we can move on that. There's already a time frame that Beth was talking about, our, our director of public works, that they can start and do some of the work. Where is the new pavilion going to be? <clears throat> right opposite the playground, in between the softball field and the children's playground. You're keeping the old one. Yes. Yeah. Yep. The addition up there is going to be a little bit larger than the one that's down near the Little League. Uh, that will remain down there for use. The one up top will be handling the soccer fields, the girls' softball fields, mm -hmm. the, playground. the playground area. Boys big roof league up there. Um, it will have ADA bathrooms, two of them, um, some storage areas, and for the cooking apparatus, there's nothing in, nothing of honey fire will be cooked inside the building. They'll have to do it outside on grills and stuff. But I think that uh, and it'll have an overhang to cover some picnic tables so people can get out of the sun and have a place to a cold drink or a hot dog or something and use the, use the facility. So I would like to get authorization from the board to move forward on that. There's some other things that we want to talk about, DPW items, certainly the fire department items, set public safety and stuff. But uh, Did, will this become the American Rescue Money? Yes. So the main, in American Rescue, the main guarantees almost are anything that improves air quality through air ventilation and air H, HVAC, which is heating, cooling, and ventilation. So we're working on two projects at the firehouse right now. Um, we're hoping that'll qualify for ARP. And we're working, getting quotes for the town office and um, the school? Not the senior center, okay. it's still working. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the school has made a request, but theirs is very complicated and very expensive. Uh, but the minimal request is to upgrade the electrical enough so that they can put HVAC in the A room. Um, to do the whole school is over five million. But to do the A wing is a little under a million. Um, 
so you know so there's a lot of things that said ARP on here. I, I, I'm reluctant to say let's do something with other than what we've talked about with the firehouse. Let's go and do some more of these things because I want to see what happens if we get together and write a few grants, get some, get none, whatever. It'll give you an idea. Because if you start spending money on something, you won't get a grant for it. They'll say, well, you've already started. It means you must have the money for it. So that's a little bit of time. Constraint. Well, also, they're finalizing. The Treasury hasn't totally finalized all the rules. They're still taking input, and they haven't started having public hearings for small towns yet. That's coming. They've been doing the cities first. Okay. Um, and then I'm getting printouts of frequently asked questions. I just ordered one set of them tonight. And uh, Stephen, we're starting to read everything. But what, what it's coming down to is if you can make, if you can. Put in writing your thought process of why you think it's justified within the rules, and that's submitted to the auditors. The auditors have to eventually agree that you are within the guidelines of the American Rescue Plan. And with Rec Park, that might mean you you can prove that you've expanded the use of the Rec Park, and more people are outdoors, and more people are safe. With the HVAC, more people are breathing cleaner air. There's better ventilation. So that's within the rules. The firefighters, we have to prove that whatever we purchase will keep them safer and protect them from the COVID virus when they're going on calls and they'll have better equipment to save more people. So all these things we've got to write up and we'll learn as we go from other successful towns. So right now I'd like to uh, you know, see your, hear your thoughts and then vote on Moving forward with maybe the rec park pavilion up there, we our word is not that we'll bring it to a town meeting. We'll discuss it. We'll show them. Um, but honestly, I think this board is going to decide with input and make the judgment call on how we spend the ARP money. Is that you mean correct? Public hearing instead of town meeting. Yes, public so, hearing. Sorry. Board selectmen, five pack. Get their feedback and then back to the board selectmen when it comes here for final voting as we go forward to authorize projects. So, do I need to make a motion to move forward on the uh, Rec Park Pavilion project and HVAC using project? A, which ones now? HVAC, so it would be the town hall and the fire department, HVAC and air exchange systems. In, in moving forward, you're scheduling a town meeting. We'll move forward by recommending that to the five pack and then come back to a public hearing and a final right. vote for the board selectmen because we'll, we'll just keep taking it step by step. Because this could take years. And I think you're you're just gonna kind of inch along as we go. We have to have this completed, all POs cut by 2024 and off everything done and expended by 2026. Wow. But any project, could, a big project, could take two years. So what motion do I need to say? Uh, I think what you said that you the um, concession stand handicap bathroom and HVAC um, projects within the town hall and the uh, fire department and their exhaust exchange system. Okay, so moved. I make a motion that we uh, like set a course to put forth plans to uh, use the American Rescue Funding for the uh, Rec Park New Pavilion with plans with including uh, two bathrooms and eating area, as well as HVAC for the town hall and the Columbia Volunteer Fire Department exhaust. Exchange system. Any more discussion? Wasn't there two things at the firehouse? Yeah, yeah. It's the exhaust exchange and the HVAC. And the oh, town yeah. hall. And, and the exhaust, exhaust system. Uh, excuse me, the HVAC at the firehouse. I didn't know that. Okay. Is that, is that the same thing we're talking about? We're talking about the, the HVAC and then so that's the, the heating and cooling system. Yeah, and then the exhaust system, engine the truck, exhaust system, the truck exhaust. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's four things. Yes. And then the AV is not included in that. Yeah. Well.
Well, the what? That could be included. The what? Uh, audio visual presentation that Tom made because that would be for training and all the volunteers to be COVID trained. And that's the 27,005, yes. whatever it is from us. Yes. Yeah, that could be a priority. Okay, I'll okay. amend my motion to add the audio visual from the fire department. So, well, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 At least it's like this aye. So we'll move that, send it to five pack at uh, input, right? Yeah, and then and the board actual board. public hearing and a final vote for sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, Town Beach Concrete Pier Repair. So I moved to authorize the town to execute a contract with Kane Underwater Services to do a concrete repair to Town Beach Pier. Discussion. So what's happening is underneath the pier, some of the concrete is giving way, whether it's the the flow of the water through the lake, whether it's the speed of the boats that are passing by. That's why we went to the no weight uh, buoys that were put out there or are putting out there. But the bottom line is the, the foundation of the pier is crumbling away. Is that the and I don't, put in? Yes. I think it's more the sand is undermining the mountain. Yes. It's the, it, the sand is moving. It's, it's um, it's unearthing the underbelly of the pier, and that, for some reason, that also the concrete is is pulling away or breaking away. So that one's probably what, about six years old. Yeah, the other one lasted thirty years or something. Yeah. I'm just wondering. So we went out uh, for bids, and Kane Underwater Services came in. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, Kane Underwater is who we contracted as well to do all our mornings, the underwater analysis and upgrade our morning fields. Uh, the other companies we contacted were not interested. They mostly only do um, ocean construction and bay, salt water. Um, so the only firm that had the skill and the um, background to do this project right now is Kane Underwater. And we thought they're their quota not to exceed 9,000 was reasonable for the size of the project. Is that what it is not to exceed the sum? This is the estimated number. Well, it says total project estimate not to exceed 9,000. So, so because there are caveats there because of the way uh, prices are going up and up and up, uh, products and. I would recommend that with this project that you kind of waive any other bits and quotes because I think you have to get at least a couple of prices. Yeah, so the reason the board selection so have to vote on this is we only have one bidder. I'm required by your purchasing order to send two verbal quotes. Over how much? What are these Between them. What are these other bids in here? That's not. That's from Tom. That's, that's the audio visual system. Oh. Um, yeah, under 10,000, you need two per hours. I don't know anything about concrete, just to make sure that the same thing. That's right. Yeah. We can't find anyone else to do it. That's right. I'm getting confused. Yeah. Oh, Lisa has a comment. So my, my, my question is so, didn't we do this style of pier because it was less disruptive to? the the lake bed than our previous type of pier but it seems to me that if we're going to end up doing a whole bunch more work it's actually being more disruptive to have to go in there again and god only knows in six years are we going to do it again should is a redesign a look at a redesign in order or what did that pier cost so years i don't know about oh, fifty thousand dollars Fifty thousand. So I mean, or is it the concrete? I don't think, you know, yeah, you know what? It's also the, it's just the sand stuff. They, they That's right. Kind of, you know how when you they, step they on did. the beach and the wave comes in and the sand yeah. all goes away from yeah. the feet. And possibly the footings didn't go deep enough, okay. and the soil that it's sitting on has 
I, I just my thought is just evaluate what happens here. We've, we've got to fix it, obviously, but just make sure that the same thing doesn't happen again. Well, I think as they do this project of pouring the concrete lower, you're going to, as they get into this project, they're going to learn a lot more. Yeah, I just Mark. I, Mark? Yes. Mark, can I? This is Jason. I, I didn't know that was you. Hi. Um, this is Jason. Noah's ad. Jason Noah's ad. Um, so the concrete is not actually failing. Uh, it's being under the um, lake bed below it is being undermined. Um, the concrete is not showing signs of failure. Um, so this project should be to make sure that the lake bed uh, stops moving out from underneath the concrete that was poured. Um, I think somebody mentioned that uh, potentially it wasn't uh, deep enough to begin with, and that's probably um, that's probably the mistake that was made. Um, but uh, the the structure of the of the pier is uh, solid. Uh, it it was not something once I investigated it. Um, something that I wanted to uh, condemn for this current year. A um, lot of rebar in there if it was actually done as per plans. Um, it's a solid, it's a very solid dock. Um, it just, uh, we're losing some of the uh, lake bed underneath it and it needs to be shored up so that it doesn't become a not solid dock. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Lisa. Thank you. If I recall, it, the old pier had underneath was kind of solid, so it stopped any wave action from passing underneath it. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I seem to remember. When they did this pier, they did piles so that now the water can pass underneath the dock. And is that not where the, pro the so now you have a current that's able to ha happen that wasn't able to happen before. These are not piles. These are um, these are solid walls on on a large pad that was poured on the uh, on the lake bed. And uh, rather than digging down with piles um, to far lower than where we lower the water um, over the winter, uh, it's it's just on top of the lake bed. So as you lower the water, uh, as there's currents created by either wave action from boats or wave action from storms. Um, it's allowed sand and, and, and the lake bed to uh, erode from underneath the, uh, the bottom footing, which is just a large pad, a 12 inch thick um, pad. Okay. I guess the bottom line is, is this going to fix it? <laughs> yeah, I mean that, yeah. Uh, Jason, do you feel this will fix the problem? I feel that it'll fix the problem. Uh, if, I mean, the, the level, the level to which we put in the fill and the, uh, the structural fill and the, and the concrete underneath it, um, if we decide to lower the lake bed further in the future uh, or the lake level further in the future, or if we continue to have, um, you know, wave action from in incredible storms, um, you know, this is a fix, not a, um, we're, we're not going down five feet deep um, underneath this, um, underneath the current foundation so that we can guarantee that nothing else is going to erode in the future. Um, obviously, if you don't lower the lake as much, you're going to get less erosion at, at the, at that far end of the pier, which is where, where the erosion is happening. Um, you know, but everybody wants the lake lowered um, so they can do repairs, <laughs> which we need to do this time. Um, so, you know, it's it will repair the it will repair the problem, but there are it, it is a repair, not not a um, a good new 
you know, hey, let's let's put let's drive pilings down, you know, eight feet into the ground and 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 get to ledge or something like that, which would be obviously uh, um, that would end the the discussion of whether uh, you're going to undermine the pier. Thank you. Anybody else? So I made a motion to contract Kane Underwater Service. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Columbia Lake, an application to install a new mooring for Mr. Michael Scalise, 14 Lake New Park West. I move to approve the application for installing a new 14 Lake New Park West, contingent upon the recommendation condition set forth by Elna. So I'm looking at that. Um, they got no problem. According as review is recommended, all that board selection that's currently approved. So we're just putting out more. On property line 35 feet away from each side, and approximately 100 feet offshore, as per our lake management guide set. So those in favor, then any motion? Yeah. Yep. All those in, or any more discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Did you have the original for me to sign? I'll sign it right Okay. Okay. Uh, resignations. Resignation from William O'Brien from the Youth Services Committee. Um, I was surprised to get this. I know this has been Bill, one of Bill's, uh, you know, heartfelt projects and stuff. I, I I understand being so overwhelmed with things that are going on in life, and it's not our business. But the bottom line is, he's done a tremendous job, and he's gotten people involved that, that normally wouldn't be involved. And he's asked for things for people, for youth services, and uh, always been very you know, smart and responsible and, you know, it's what, what we need for the people growing up in the community and stuff. So I'm sorry to see this, but Bill, you want to talk it all to it or what? I think it speaks for itself. Okay. Um, they'll miss you, but I'm sure that if somebody picked up the phone and wanted to pick your brain about something, I'm sure you'd still be there. There is a meeting in November that, I'm leaving January 1st, but there's a meeting in November um, you know, there's issues that are coming up in terms of revisiting issues that we had in the past in terms of uh, uh, our affiliations with uh, AHM and everything. So be prepared for that. You know, um, I did talk to Mark about it a little bit, and there is, uh, I know we had done a study a while back, and a lot of the questions that are being raised were addressed at that point in time. So I was hoping that we could find that study and address, you know, put to bed some of these issues. Okay. Because we really do have a, a wonderful arrangement with uh, AHM right now, and uh, you know, one of the biggest assets that you have is having um, Cherie Rivard Lentz over at Porter School doing a wonderful job here. So I, I really hope that you know we can maintain those relationships and, and keep her there. Well, thank you. I look forward to uh, to hearing all about it and stuff. Believe me. Uh, so when the kid gets back on Monday, we're going to search for that. I remember that discussion a few years ago, more than a few years ago, when uh, we're still you, with them. You so. were new on the board, I think. Yeah, we're still with them. So um, yeah. there was some. All right, very good. So I move that we accept the resignation of William O'Brien from Youth Services Committee. All those in favor? Aye. Um, two reasons. <laughs> With regrets. Our administrator's report. Um, the none of the damage from uh, Ida was mainly um, two driveways and uh, part of the bridge on Pine Street. 
and uh, there was a lake road uh, damage. The entire driveway was destroyed on lake. We had a minor damage to gravel driveways eroded on 75 Double Day, and 31 Pine Street had minor gravel driveway erosion. Um, the uh, rest of the town buried as well as can be imagined with that much rain coming through uh, as it did. And uh, Public Works did a stellar job. I mean, it's amazing that they've got Pine Street repaired as fast as they did with just their equipment. They did a real nice job there. Yeah, now they're gonna go on the other side of the guardrail here at Best Back um, and finish backfilling to the head wall uh, next. Beth, do you have anything more to add with Ida and our where we are to date in bringing the town back? We basically had the two main areas, the one on Pine Street and also Thompson Hill where we lost a portion of the road. Um, both Pine Street's nearly complete, Thompson Hill, we just have some paving to do. Um, we should have all the repairs complete by either the end of this week or first thing next week. And I've documented um, the costs associated with that and we'll put in a, with FEMA to see if our county will qualify. The purpose to be commended on the uh, fine work over on Pine Street with you guys are out there quick and got that done really, really well. It was very impressive. It was shocking how much damage the water can do. And the two docks at the lake were totally underwater. Right. Yeah. Totally underwater. Uh, thank you, Beth. You did uh, tell everybody in the department, the board says thank you. They did a tremendous job and we appreciate it. Thank you. Beth, don't leave. We're going to invite you into executive session at the end. Okay. Of you. Thank you. Okay. Um, there was some, uh, in addition to that, we we're having a meeting. When are we having our meeting? Thursday? Yes. Uh, yes. Thursday morning. Um, there, there's some lessons learned coming out of it and uh, for the emergency, um, and we'll keep you abreast of that. This was totally unexpected. I thought everybody did a great job, but I saw. Yeah, uh, but there's always stuff that you can do right. differently. Uh, some correspondence in there, take a look at it. Budget. Transfers. So I, I, uh, I vote to approve $14,908 transfers and consisting of uh, building inspection facilities and maintenance to cover the cost of the general supplies for facilities maintenance. It's 255 Um, for lake management to transfer cover the cost of the budget for gate monitoring marine patrol salaries two hundred dollars two thousand three hundred sixty five dollars for administration to cover the cost of budget for the town of Columbia pension there's uh, more staff eligible this year now, just on the anticipated cost for the plan reinstatement, which was charged by Power Retirement. Is that the old company? No, no. Two, uh, $2,200 from contingency for legal notices, the unbudgeted cost for legal notice ad posting the town charter revision. That's what we're mandated to do. Uh, $879 to cover tax collection, unbudgeted validator replacement, and tax collector's office. Current one's outdated and in need of repair. And then $9,000 in contingency to cover unbudgeted costs of concrete repair to the voided areas of the Columbia Lake dock. The repair will be completed after the lake drawdown in November. And $9. That. To cover the cost above budget for the building appeal services legal. Yep. 
for a total of 14,908. Any discussion? So with the, um, are we going to be getting together to? You know, the, the issues with the uh, charter over um, election of officials for board of selectmen. Are we going to kind of look at changing that? You got a decision on it, or you don't need to change it. You have a precedent. It's a legal I think precedent. you're for, even for future ones. Then. It's still, the law has been interpreted to say that we could, it could be done that way. Okay. Then we can we can do it the way we did it. Put uh, I guess so. Nothing has to be changed. I, I think there'd be a lot of work for just that. I think you got to address things. Okay. Can I I I do have a comment on that, and that is um, I actually regret greatly because Kate Hokinson had brought up that she thought the way we voted on boards and stuff was confusing. And it's not so much that it's confusing, it's that we can have the situation we now have where it's really not fair. And I almost regret having voted and approved the charter as it is, because I think the um, election of boards might need to be changed so that we never run into the situation where a board, is, so what's gonna happen now is that for instance, if the Republicans take over the majority this time in 2023, there's no way for the Democrats to try to take over the majority. And it maybe should have been changed. And if I had realized what was going to happen with this election, when we were doing the charter, I would have said we needed to revamp how boards were elected. And I actually will probably vote no on the charter question at the election. Because of it. But that's a question, but you're saying with the legal thing, it's not an issue that we don't have to do it. Well, I'm thinking if the Democrats are faced with the same situation in uh, two or four years, it doesn't make yes. a difference. The judge are already interpreting it. So we could run. You, you to, it's a finalized decision. You have precedent saying this is the way to do it. Democrats could take majority. So we can yes. find more. Yeah, well, that's exactly, they would run. It, it cuts both ways, but, but it, it's the judges decided that this is the fair way to do it, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with it as far as going through the whole process of the charter right now, considering where we are with it personally. Well, it's more that Kate had brought up the point that we could reelect the whole slate every time. So instead of doing two years, two years, you could. You could almost, I was thinking you could have done it. So the first selectman was a totally separate office, maybe do them every four years and then on the opposite to do the whole board. It's not, and the point was that she made is like, well, it's unlikely that everybody would, would be replaced. They'd put up incumbents. It's not like the board would be turned over and it would be all new people. And she had a point, but she said when she brought it up, it was about the confusion aspect, but like I said, if I had understood the majority issues that we're having right now, and that in 2023, it's only two Democrats up, and if we were to win the seat, it would be only two Democrats, and there'd be no way for the Democrats to try to change for the majority, try for the majority. It seems to me that it's just not fair. It would have been better, I think, if we had revisited how boards were elected. And I, re I really regret not having looked deeper into it when we were doing the charter revision, because if we pass it, we can't change this for another 10 years. So what would you say? Because we can't change what we did or didn't do in the past. Right. So, I mean, we're kind of stuck, unless, of course, the voters vote it down, and then we get to revisit it. I'm not sure. That but, but because this went before a judge, right. the judge has ruled in the favor of the exchange with the ability for either party to go after the majority, the precedent has been set. As it is written, it can be understood one way how the judge ruled on it, which means no party will retain, will retain the majority without the minority party having the ability to set forth a candidate to change that. That's how the, the, the ruling went down. We put forth another person. So if it happens two years from now, the Democrats are gonna say, that's all right. You can read it how you want, but 
The precedent has been set by a judge that says we can put forth the candidates to be able to take back the majority. So we don't actually have to change the charter. The only reason to change the charter would be if in, in eight years, it, it's happening and, and nobody remembers that the precedent was set. However, I think we're gonna be okay. So, um, okay. I see what Lisa's saying. Though. I see what she's saying. Yeah. It should be changed. But you know what we did to go. When... <clears throat> the court, I mean, that sets the precedent with the, what the court is saying. So it kind of is. Except it's the same as changing. Yeah. You're right. So somehow put something there, you know, so that down the road people remember something in the chart. This is a precedent that was. Well, maybe if it comes up, there's a there's a discussion of. We're going to find a case and say, here it is. Yeah. It's pretty clear when we engage. Yeah, yeah. Right. You just have to change your terms. You have to right. recycle the whole board every four years and that was all. Right. Yeah. Well, the, like I said, the way to get this to not have to wait 10 years to write this is to change, to vote, vote the charter down. Just don't pass it. Then the Charter Revision Committee has to get back together, make some changes, and then set it up again next year. That's okay. the only way. To, otherwise, you're going to wait 10 years. And in two years, the Democrats, if the Republicans were to win the majority, the only people up are two Democrats, and there would no, be no way for them to try for the majority. And I, you know what? I don't like it any more for them than I do for us. That's not true. First election, they Two hundred hands up. You know, that's in two years. In two yeah, years, Judy, Judy, and Rob will be up, and they'll be the only ones up. And so there would be no way for them to take a third seat. That's Every four years is the majority. Yeah, there's back. no way we could get the majority back. Right. For every four years. For mm -hmm. But then two years is no way for us to get back. Right. That's right. right. And. And I don't know if that's right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, I just, that's it. I, if we elected the whole board every four years um, at one time, it would be an obvious thing. And uh, make the first selectman and, and a standalone on the opposite two years. That's all. But that's, I mean, it, I'm just saying that's one way of doing it, but it's, it's a thought. There are other ways of doing it. And I wish I had paid more attention to what Kate Hokinson was saying at the Charter Revision Committee. And I will not vote for it. I will not vote yes. I will vote no for the Charter Revision. You still have to put it in the paper because it's going to referendum, right? Yes. It's so, yeah. That's it. The whole town gets to vote on that. So all it has to do is not pass. <laughs> not that I'd want to do that again anytime soon. All you have to do is put something about pay as you go for trash in with it <laughs> all right thank you any other discussion on the transfers <laughs> no. we'll do the transfers. all those the in transfer. favor of the transfers all right opposed yeah thank you all right all right Wait. It's been a month. It's the last meeting, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have two thousand twenty-five hundred every month, but I make a motion we approve refunds in the amount of four thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars and eighty-one cents. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. All the same. Mm. always talking. When was that? That's the house insurance. I know. I know. So make a motion to pay bills in the amount of one hundred twenty-six thousand eight hundred forty-seven dollars and thirty-three cents. Come from the regular. Twenty-twenty. 2122 emergency and 2122 regular credit card and paycheck. 
Did Blue Box go up when they changed when they, the rebuilt sold it? Uh, yeah, it's not a done, it's not uh, like the signed. Under contract. Well, I think they're going to honor what they did. Yeah. Um, Except the contract, yeah. And then after that, it's kind of negotiated. What the uh, opinion match black? <clears throat> I had one question on the Columbia Views extra signature line, just what that was. Um, we were getting so the number of pages of the views is determined by advertisement, number of advertisers, but we have a very uh, good supply of authors that keep writing articles that they would like to dig in. So we asked for a quote from the views to add an extra four pages for more articles. And that was in the budget. Um, so we passed that extra cost per quarter in our budget. Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor of paying the bills? Aye. 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 Opposed, thank you very much. Money into citizens. Anybody on there? Uh, nobody in chat. Cricket got anything to say? Board member comments. <laughs> okay, so I make uh, at this time I would like to suspend the original in the uh, regular meeting and go move to go into executive session. Okay, so that's at 8 22, and you have to motion to invite myself, Beverly, and that. One. So I amended to invite Mark Walter, Beverly's uh, and Beth. And that was at 822, and I'll stop the course. Uh, so we don't need a vote on anything. I move to adjourn at 853. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wait, we have a question, you're voting aye. Oh, she voted aye. All right. Voted aye. Now I got to go find me a cricket. <laughs> the cat did vote. I saw the ball cat raise the pot, honestly. That's a cute cat. It is. All right. Night, Lisa. Bye. Night, Lisa.